Hello, hello, my friends. Amy R. here with Prairie Paper and Ink. Welcome back to my face and my card making space. And I finally got a card and video done for this week's Color Throwdown Challenge. For those that might be new or just not aware, the Color Throwdown Challenge, it's just a weekly challenge just for fun. Different color combo every week. There's a group of us that do it and anyone can play along. I will have a link to it in my blog post, which is linked directly below the video. It's always fun to um, have that starting off, you know, point of colors already picked and then you just got to make something with them. So I use some of the newer wafer die sets from Simon Says Stamps June release. I'll have a link to that release as well because there was a lot. It was a big release. And I did some sim simple ink blending. I used like some specialty card stocks. Splatter, of course. Super fun. So... As always, all the supplies I used will be linked directly below the video. My links are affiliate links. That just means that if you click on one of my links, end up placing an order, I get a little kickback from that at no extra cost to you. That's what helps pay the bills, all the things. And yeah, let's get into making this card. Since this is a all die cuts card, I did all my die cutting before I started filming, especially because I just, all I did was die cut a whole bunch of white cardstock, just mostly scraps. And the first um, bit is this new Iceland Poppies Waver Dye. Love. I've talked about this in videos. I don't know what it is. I have a soft spot for poppies. I, I love poppy stamps. I love poppy wafer dyes. I love a lot of things. Really, anything floral. <laughs> Big florals, of course, but these are just really cute. So I had die cut them from Simon Smooth White Cardstock. And I die cut multiples, which you'll see. And any sort of little die set like this where there needs to be some some assembling, I like to, before I like, add ink or do anything, I like to just kind of put everything together, as you can see, and just kind of hold it. And that just, it's like, okay, my brain just needs to see it come together and then everything makes sense. These ones are very simple, you know, because some of the, there's some layering die sets where it's like, ooh, you got a lot of layers, but like I always say, once you do it once, everything just makes sense. So that's how I do it for for myself is I just kind of layer layer the pieces together. And it's like, okay, I get it. I get where things are supposed to go and you know, where I want to add color or whatever. And I've got a little grip mat here. One, one of the smaller ones, shockingly, usually I show you guys my, my huge, <laughs> my great big grip mats. But this time I was like, I need a smaller one because I had so much stuff on my desk. No surprise. And then ink blending. I wasn't thinking and I did not wipe off my brush. So the first ones you can see there were not the color they were supposed to be. Because <laughs> I still had, I think, like probably straight up red ink on my brush. Learned the lesson with the next one, but that's fine. I had extra die cuts. It was good. If I, if I wasn't doing this for a specific, like a color throwdown challenge where I was going for specific colors, I would have just went with the, the first ones, but it was fine. So for my ink blending, I used for everything, I did the lightest and then the darkest shade of Simon's Positively Saturated Ink Trios. So for the pink flowers, I used Carnation and Rose. Did my all my blending, just used the lighter color and then the darker color. And then I just stuck all those pieces just onto my, my work surface. Wiped off my grip mat. And then for the, the second cluster of uh, floral pieces, I'm using uh, lilac and amethyst inks. So going in with the lilac first, because that was the lighter shade of purple. And then adding the darker color more towards like what will be the base of the, the petals and whatnot. And that time you saw, I made sure to wipe the brush off on my microfiber cloth, just in case. <laughs> I don't wash my brushes. I've talked about this before. I don't wash any of my blending brushes. I, I don't have the time or the patience for that. You can if you want to. I just, I do not have time for that. So I just wipe them off on a microfiber cloth. And I do have uh, multiple sets of brushes. I have a set for dye, you know, water-based dye inks. And I have a set for pigments and oxide inks. Because you aren't, it's not recommended that you mix the two specifically going in with brushes that you used in pigment or oxide inks and then going into dye ink pads, you can actually over time wreck your ink pads. So I do have more than one set of brushes, again, because it's a convenience thing and I don't have the time or the energy to wash them. <laughs> 
So anywho, um, the flower centers, I did latte and mocha ink. And then uh, for all the stems, as well as this greenery, the greenery is a previously released set that I've shown in other videos. This is the lush leaves set that actually die cuts two leaf clusters, but I only use the smaller one and put that on my little grip mat and along with all of the little die cut stems. And then for these, I used uh, sprout and field inks. So I went in with the lighter shade and with these, I just kind of like slapped the green the green ink on I was fine with um not well with all of it I wasn't going for a you know a perfect blend anything like that uh these inks do smooth out as they dry you know they, they dry back they soften a bit and they smooth out I've I've mentioned this in other videos it does make blending easier but sometimes I'm more than okay with it being less perfect you know it gives a little bit of texture it gives a little interest so I did the lighter green first again and then went in with a darker and just stuck it on and let it do its thing. So very, very simple. Anybody can do this. It's just easy. And I like the, it does give extra like depth and dimension when you add ink like this to die cuts versus just die cutting from solid color cardstock. So once all my blending was done, I'm going to put all these little flowers together. And yeah, I'll go through the two different ones here on this, this little Iceland poppies die set. They're super simple to assemble just like so and on the die itself it's because you know i showed it there it's just one wafer die you know die cuts all the pieces at once but the pieces are clustered like together the top portion is one flower the bottom portion is the other so it also helps to kind of make sense hopefully hopefully my explanation makes sense i'm such a professional anyway <laughs> assembled the first little bloom adhered it to a stem and i'm going to do the exact same thing with the other bloom these come together super quick and easy. They're adorable. I'm sure these are going to make many appearances on my channel. You guys know I fixate on, you know, random little die sets, random stamp sets, things like that. Can never go wrong with like florals and greenery, birds, mushrooms. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. These would look really cute with those mushroom wafer dies. Stay tuned. I'm sure there will be a video coming at some point using them. <laughs> so anyway... After I did all my flower assembly, I'm using the Little Banners Basics uh, wafer dies from CZ Design. And I die cut the outline banner from a scrap of vellum. And then the word banner I chose, I die cut from a piece of Simon's Matte Gold cardstock. I'm going to adhere those together. And then I'll, I'll adhere the little, little center to that O that I managed to save and not lose. So just adhere those together with a little bit of craft tacky glue as well. And then I'll use my little embellishment wand to pick up that, that little tiny die cut piece, put it into place. And then there's my little sentiment banner. Love it. It is beyond adorable. So I've got that. And then I have uh, my background. This is the mini fab floral plate. And I die cut that again from smooth white cardstock. My card base is smooth white cardstock. I've mentioned this before. One of my favorite things to do with large like background wafer dies is to do just tone on tone. So I'll die cut them from the same color or in this case lack thereof um, as my base. And so it just it'll add you know some texture some depth but it's not super busy because it's the same color. So regardless of what color my card base was if you just die cut from the same color cardstock and then adhere it together like right there you got this great textured background but it's not so busy that it's going to distract from everything else so I adhered that directly to the card base and I'm using the nested domed arches frames these would be really good for shakers I was thinking about that when I was doing this but that wasn't like my plan but I was like ooh, you could stack like extras of these together and create a shaker that'd be fun but I didn't I just wanted the frame so I die cut some pieces from the white cardstock adhere those together and then the top layer I die cut from gold glitter cardstock just you cannot go wrong with glitter cardstock favorite so adhered those together so the the layers will give it some a little bit of dimension and then the gold glitter gives it gold glitter fabulousness so I've got those adhered and then I'm going to adhere this directly to the card front and then once I've got that into place it's time to start arranging my florals and I actually 
was very comfortable. I'm getting better at it. I've mentioned this in other videos. Floral arrangement is not my forte. It just, I'll see other people do that on their cards. And I'm like, how do you know where to put everything? It looks amazing. Um, but I've been working on it and I'm getting better at it. And at the bare minimum, I'm more comfortable. You know, <laughs> I'm not ready to just throw everything in the trash. <laughs> it's fun. I'm, I, I like it. So I did my little arrangement on here. And just kind of snipped off bits of the stems where, when needed or when I felt like I needed it. And then once I had my little arrangement before I do anything else, of course, we're going to add splatter. Like, that's just what we do here. So I've got my Yasutomo pale gold uh, watercolor pan here that I've been using in many recent videos. Honestly, I, I, I legit, I don't do you know, ASMR, anything. I don't do like, I don't film very many like reels or shorts hardly ever. I'm, I feel so, I feel like a dinosaur when it comes to that kind of stuff. I all hats off to anyone who can do like short form content. And I've talked about this though, specifically with this watercolor, there's something like mesmerizing, swirling my brush in it. The sound was like ASMR heaven. I, it literally made me reconsider. I was like, I need to start doing short form content. Everyone needs to hear this. <laughs> Again, you guys, you all know, I've told you guys, I'm completely insane. It's fine. It's therapeutic though. I loved it. So I used my fan brush, splattered that onto the card front, let it dry, which only took like a couple minutes. It was good. And then I had a couple more of the die cuts that I'd kept for the inside of the card and I adhered those into place. And then for my sentiment, I wasn't filming because, you know, I am a, I'm a professional and I forget to turn my camera on. So I was like, as I'm, as I was editing this, I was like, where's the footage of me heat embossing the sentiment? Didn't exist because I didn't turn the camera on. <laughs> anyway, gold heat embossing. That's what it was. I used the Sunshine and Smile stamp set and I gold heat embossed that little sentiment onto a scrap of white cardstock. Die cut it with a coordinating wafer die. Adhered it to the inside of the card. Simple. And then for the, the front that little sentiment banner, I popped a couple little foam squares hidden behind the gold so that you can't see it through the vellum and then pop that into place. And then my final little bit of embellishment is one of my go-tos. These are the Simon System Stay Gold uh, sequins, confetti. They don't have holes in them, confetti. Um, pulled a few of those out, gonna adhere those into place. And then I'll pair this card with a gold envelope, which you'll see in the photos at the end. And that finished it off. So like I said, just simple. There's a lot of texture and detail going on. We got some glitter and shimmer and the matte gold splatter and fun. So like I said in the intro, I'll have links to all the things in the description box below the video as well as a link to my blog post where the link to the challenge will be for anyone who's interested. So you can check that all out below. Thank you all so very much for taking the time to watch my videos, for thumbs upping, commenting, letting those robot overlords know you like what you see. And yeah, subscribe if you haven't. I'd love to have you and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.